All right, lesson 3-4, graphing in slope-intercept form. So if you need to, you can go back to your notes, which was from 3-3, that will give you some more detail. But how this is going to work, I'm going to work an example problem, and then one of the homework problems is right next to it. They have the same type of slope. So if this is a positive slope, this one's going to be positive. So that way you can kind of see how these should move together. So you've got an example and a problem that's very similar right next to it. Now guys, in order to get full credit, you do need to graph the example question and the one right next to it. So I'm going to do the examples with you, then you can go through and do the rest of the problems on your own. Now guys, when you are doing one of these problems, the y-intercept, your beginning point, is your constant, so the number without the letter. And you always start on the vertical y-axis. We're going to start at positive 2. Now our slope is the number that's attached to the x, so in this case it is 3 over 4. Now that's a positive slope, so it should be increasing. Positive rise of three means to go up three, and we always start by going over to the right to begin with, so I'm going to the right four. So I would count from that point, up three units, and then over to the right four, up three, and then over one, two, three, four, and put a point. So you need two points to the right and to the left. So to go to the left, you're gonna do the exact opposite of what we just wrote down right here. So instead of going up three, now I go down three, and instead of going to the right four, I go to the left, one, two, three, four, and put my point. So down three, and then over to the left four. Once you've got your points all connected, so you need to have that middle point and two points on both sides, now you can connect your points with a line. So I'm gonna take my ruler, line everything up, connect the dots, arrows on both ends, and it needs to make sure that it goes all the way through your graph. Starts at two, up three, and over four. Now for example number two, the y-intercept is still the number that's all by itself. In this case, that's a negative three. You do need to take that sign that's in front of it. So we're gonna start at negative three on the y-axis. Now my slope is a positive two, and any time you have a slope that's not a fraction, put a one on the bottom, because two divided by one is still two, but now we can see, okay, up, after we go up two, then we're gonna go over to the right one. It was positive, that's how I know we're going up. So I'd count up two and over to the right one, put my point, up two, over to the right one, put my point. To go the other way, do the exact opposite, down two and left one, down two and left one. Once you've got the, your five points, if they fit on your graph, go ahead and take your ruler and connect the points. Line them up perfectly, all the way through your graph, arrows on both ends. Now for example number three, you're still going to start off with your y-intercept, your beginning point, the number that's all by itself. So I start at positive seven on my y-axis. Now my slope is the number that's attached to the x, so negative one-third. And whenever you have a negative fraction, just let the negative sign go with the top number. So now if we have a rise of negative one, that actually means we are going down one unit instead of up. But that bottom number, we are still going to the right. You always want to start by moving to the right. So down one and then over to the right three, put my point. Down one, over to the right three, put my point. To go the other direction, I've got to do the exact opposite. So this time I'm going to go up one and to the left three. So up one and to the left three. Once you've got all your five points, go ahead and take your ruler, connect the points with a line all the way through your graph. Arrows on both ends. All right, after this, flip it over. Let's do example number four on the back. So for example number four, I can see that my y-intercept is the positive two, that's the number that's all by itself, but this time there is not a number in front of my x. Now guys, anytime there's not a number, that actually means there's an imaginary one, so our slope is one. Now it's not a fraction, so anytime that you have a number that's not a fraction, you divide it by one. One divided by one is still one, so we have not changed the value, but now I know we are going up one and over to the right one positive, that's how I know we're going up, and we always start by going over to the right. So up one and right one. To go the other direction, you go down one and left one. Once you've got all of your points, connect them with your ruler, all the way through the graph, arrows on both ends. Now, 
for example number five, this one does have a number that's attached to the x, so that makes that my slope because there's, it is attached to the x. Now we don't have an adding or subtracting number over here, and when that's the case, that means your y-intercept is zero. It's kind of like saying plus zero, which doesn't change anything, so we're going to start at the origin. Now our slope this time is a negative number, so I've got to let the negative sign go with the top number. If we've got a rise of negative three, that actually means we are going down three units, and we're always gonna start by moving over to the right for that bottom number. So I'm gonna count down three, and then over to the right, one, two, three, four. That's the only point I can put in this direction. To go the other way, up three, and to the left, one, two, three, four. Put my dot. Now that I've got all of my points, I can connect them with a line, arrows on both ends, all the way through. Example six. Now for this problem, my y-intercept is negative five. That's my constant, the number that's all by itself. Make sure you put it on the negative five and not the positive five. My slope is negative four. And it is a whole number. There's no fraction or, so I'm going to take this number and divide it by one. Negative four divided by one is still negative four. But now I've got a negative rise, so I'm going down four units and then over to the right one. So I would count one, two, three, four, and then over to the right one. To go the other way, up two, three, four, and to the left one. One, two, three, four, and to the left one. I've got two points in each direction if it fits. Take my points, connect them with my ruler all the way through the graph. Now the last two problems are the new part for today. One of these has a zero slope and one of them has a undefined slope. Now, when you're, if you cannot remember which one is which, you do have a y equals button in your calculator. So even if you can't remember what that thing's supposed to look like, just type it in, y is equal to three. That one is a flat line that goes through positive three on the y axis. That's why it's actually a y equals, because we crossed the y axis. So that means if y equals is a horizontal line, x equals needs to be the vertical line. And since we are talking about slope right here, when you have a flat line, that is a zero slope. When you have the line going straight up and down, that slope is undefined. Now after you finish this assignment, you're gonna finish this, put this in the tray. This assignment does not leave the classroom. You must finish it and turn it in before the end of class. After that, I want you to work on this assignment, a stained glass window. Now what you're going to do is pick three equations from each box, and it doesn't matter which ones you choose, I'm just going to pick random ones. Okay. Pick any three from each one of those boxes, and you're going to graph them all on the same picture together. And you've got to make sure that your lines go all the way through the graph because at the end, you are going to color in all the different um, sections. So for example, I started putting one together. If I had all these lines, I would color this one, maybe a certain color, this little square, this little triangle, all that stuff. Go ahead and color them in. So you're going to make this a bunch of different colors like a stained glass window.